Welcome back to the program. I'm joined now by Janet Harris. She is the Executive Director and CEO of the Winthrop Rockefeller Institute on Mount Pettyjean. Good to see you as always. Good to my see you, my friend. Longtime friend. Great to have you with us. I'm going to begin with a question that you may be the only person who knows the answer to this, unless they've read it on your website already. Who is Marion Stevenson? Ah. Marion Stevenson is a woman who worked for Winthrop Rockefeller when he was governor. He actually um, hired and promoted her throughout his administration, and it's been a delight to get to know her and learn about his leadership. She had some persistence, though, that got her that job. I want you to tell that story. <laughs> she did. So uh, she applied for a position with Governor Rockefeller's administration, uh, was interviewed by Everett Fulgham, who was one of his aides. Uh, at the time and he explained to her that she was too young and she was too inexperienced and she did not have the education needed for the position. Uh, so they turned her down, he turned her down. She came back a second time when the job came open again, interviewed again, uh, was denied a second time, uh, same reasoning. And the third time she went back for an interview, Everett said, same thing, you're not, you're not qualified, you're too young. And then a couple of weeks later she got a call from him and he said, you know, I told the governor about you. And he said, we need to hire this woman because she's not going away. <laughs> <laughs> and so she credits him for sharing that story with Winthrop Rockefeller because it was her determination and persistence that got her the job. Senator Dale Bumpers once said, perseverance breeds success. So there, there you, you go. There you go, yeah. All right, uh, the Rockefeller legacy today is extensive in many different areas. Um, I wanna focus today on civil public dialogue as something that you and I talk about um, as friends quite mm -hmm. a bit. Yeah. Um, we see a sometimes rare occurrence in the Arkansas legislature of some civil discourse, sometimes even on this show, but we also see a lot of in our politics on social media, a lot of pot shots. Mm -hmm. Uh, we see a lot of people that seem to thrive on yelling at each other versus talking to yeah. one another. How do we foster a stronger mm. civic public dialogue? Mm. <laughs> it's hard, uh, but yet it's necessary. And part of what we do at the Institute is encourage people to connect with one another. It all starts with relationships. Um, so if you aren't able to really talk with someone, connect with someone, understand what motivates them, what they're afraid of, what they're concerned about, and vice versa, uh, then you're not really getting to the heart of the matter. You're not really discussing the issue in a way that's meaningful. And so a lot of what we do at the Institute is encourage that meaningful dialogue before we ever start examining an issue. That, and that's what Governor Rockefeller did. And that's what Governor Rockefeller did. Um, yes, absolutely. Give me an example of something where he kind of did that. I mean, it, it, in civil rights, I think is a great example. And civil rights is a great example. Um, he talks about, you know, uh, he wrote a book called A Letter to My Son in which he talked about his experiences um, throughout his life and the things that shaped him. And one of the things that he said is that the understanding of men and women is one of the greatest joys that you'll ever know. But that in order to do that, you know, you have to be willing to get to know them. You have to be willing to sort of, um, you know, make that connection and, and work together. He said every citizen has a duty to be informed, to be thoughtfully concerned, and to participate in the search for solutions. But we have to do that together because no one of us can achieve what we want to achieve on our own. One of the other great things about his legacy is that he did embrace and intentionally go out and uh, develop relationships and reward people, people of color, women in leadership, yeah, such as your uh, Marion Stevenson uh, story that you told earlier there. Um, where do you think that legacy stands today? There's a lot of attacks mm -hmm. on, say, affirmative action at the state legislature. There's a lot of attacks on people feeling like we've gone too far in one direction. Yeah, I think that, um, it would be hard for Winthrop Rockefeller to recognize the world that we're living in today. He passed, uh, actually this year is the anniversary, 50th anniversary of his passing. And so, you know, I, I, there are a lot of ways in which maybe we have taken a few steps backward um, in thinking about how we uh, foster equality, how we um, continue to in be inclusive and work with people even across our differences. 
Um, and so I, you know, what we're trying to do at the Institute is to find those areas where we can have common ground. And frankly, you know, there's a lot of that to be had. I mean, um, across the political spectrum, yes, you have people who are very staunchly conservative, very staunchly liberal. You have a lot of people who are also somewhere along that long spectrum in the middle and that just want to have an opportunity and need to have an opportunity to have their voice at the table and to figure out how we move forward together. So I think that's the key is it's not fighting each other on social media, it's not taking the pot shots as you say, but it's asking ourselves what do we share? What is our shared purpose? What do we care about? And how can we find that common ground to move forward together? And I think that's possible. I really do. I've seen it happen at the Institute. Well, I've seen it happen in the state legislature too. Just last week we had uh, uh, Representative Robin Lundstrom mm -hmm. and Senator Clark Tucker on. You couldn't find two more diametrically opposed <laughs> Those political yeah. viewpoints, but they're actually co-sponsors on some legislation together. Yeah. And so when you when you find that, I try to highlight that because I do Absolutely. think that it's important. Because it's yeah. not just that sweet spot in the middle that's looking for something that's temperamental or temper, temperate and balanced. I think it's even on the edges, there's still a lot in common, even if on the extremes. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, I think a great example of Governor Rockefeller embodying all of that is his work with Governor Orville Faubus. You talk about two extremes. Yeah. They uh, they really disagreed on very many things, but Winthrop, Rock Winthrop Rockefeller said, I hope I can never uh, fail to work with someone with whom I disagree. And he was talking about Faubus in that way, and that he was talking specifically about um, economic development yep. and how they could partner and work together on those and things. They, they had some and success. they did. All right, uh, we got about 60 seconds left. You got an upcoming Distinguished Lecture Series. Yes. It's around the state as well as up on the mountain. Tell it's me what you got. It's going to be broadcast with our partners on Arkansas PBS, but um, if you want to join us on the mountain, registration closes tomorrow, Monday, yeah. uh, March the 13th. It's a lecture on water. Dr. Peter McCormick of the uh, Doherty Water for Food Global Institute will be talking about how we feed the world and still conserve our water resources. How, why is water so important? I know why, but I want you to tell me why. <laughs> well, water's important. Arkansas is a water-rich state. However, climate change um, and the growing population in the world means that we, who feed the world, are going to have to figure out how we do a better job across the country, but especially here in conserving those precious resources. All right, she's so. Janet Harris. She is the CEO of the Rockefeller Institute. The website is? RockefellerInstitute.org. I knew you'd know that. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Thanks, Always Robbie. a pleasure. Okay. All right. We're back to wrap up right after this.